Okay, hey, welcome back. Alana, my daughter-in-law, right here. Hello. Hello. So here we are. We're taking the long trek to go get these sheep. It's like a five-hour drive, so. So what we did here is uh, just threw some, some grass clippings in the bottom of this. It's on top of the bed. The boys did a good job building this thing. Turned out pretty stellar. This little latch is just for uh, looks because it rattles open real quick. So we just got it wired shut and uh, this should work great for some sheep. So we're gonna hit the road and uh, hopefully everything goes well. All right, here we go. Oh yeah, start with the big one first. Now the one thing I did mess up on, I was gonna put tin on top of this thing before we left and I didn't get around to it. Little package. Uh, it sure looks like. We had two rams in there. Uh oh, so okay. You want two? I guess I'm getting two, I mean, we don't have any more. No Are more. you gonna have him separated from these? Are they all gonna be together all the time? Because well, how soon will this, he'll, will he start trying to breed real soon? I would say within three or four months. Okay. He'll be trying to breed. How old are these these lambs now to use? Two to three. Two to three. So we need to wait, we need to wait till fall. Yeah. Yep. We'll put a ram on them in fall. Okay, if, well. If you're gonna have the ram separate or somewhere else, I would say take two. They get very long with their, yep. some of the worst with it. Yep. Take him out, you wanna take him out? This other, this smaller ram, um, when is he going to be sexually active? Soon? Probably three months. Three months? I would say three months. Three months, so. Oh, yeah, okay, we'll just keep them both. Uh, they'll need a butt. No, I'll need, they'll have, have, have to have a buddy. I mean, that's... Gonna have to have a buddy. No, I don't, I don't keep animals. Like that. It's too much stress on them, so. There we go. Like our redneck uh, cage here. All right. My boys threw this thing together another a couple days ago. <laughs> I'm going to grab one. Voila, there we go. We got some sheep. Always wire. Never trust a mechanical latch, trust wire. I'll tell you what, I've had some critters that could open just about any latch. Especially horses, they play with it long enough, they'll get it open. Okay, so what do you think? I think we're, we're crazy for coming this far. I know. I think that. It was a long drive. Yeah. But I think they're cute. They look like, you know, they're in good condition. Yeah, they have good body yeah. condition. Like, I don't know a whole heck of a lot about sheep, honestly. I don't consider that I know anything about sheep until I actually run them and raise them and all that stuff. Kind of like I said about cattle. You have all the book knowledge you want, but, you know, uh, they, they proliferate in nature. So I think as long as we get out of the way, it should just do fine for us. Five and a half hours and we'll be home. Hey. Okay, here we are next morning. We got home really late last night, so we just went to bed, cut them some fresh grass, threw it in there, made sure they had water, and just left a minute for tonight, or for last night. We got this nice little enclosure set up. We saw Austin put this thing together. It's gonna work great. There's enough forage in here for these little guys for, for quite some time, so we're gonna use this as a temporary, and you can see that we have the hot fence set up in here. Austin did a good job. Got it insulated around the whole perimeter, roughly 12, 14 inches off the ground, and hopefully it's gonna educate them really well, and they'll start getting some respect for that hot fence. So we'll keep them in here for days, maybe a week, I don't know. We'll just see how it goes and how much they respect that wire. And then uh, we're gonna try and inter integrate them into our herd eventually. Now, if you look at them, they're, they're pretty small. So, you know, if they, if they don't bond well to the cattle and horses, they'll be coyote bait. So we don't want that to happen. All right, first victim. Want to help me, buddy? Which one of these little creatures do you want? Uh, I'll take the smallest one. <laughs> okay, here you go. You're going to smell like a dirty sheep. Okay. <laughs> okay. Come here, little guys. Come here. Come here. Here goes the first. There we go. There goes the second. This one's got a bit of a dirty tail, <laughs> as you can see. So 
Don't know if it was a forge change, if it's a little bit of parasite. Looks like he's fairly thrifty, she, and has good condition. So we're gonna watch it very closely. If I have to worm one of these animals to get started, I'm going to, I'm not gonna let them die. And then through management, and hopefully really good nutrition, they're gonna take and build a natural resistance. Um, you know, it's all about animal nutrition. If you have a healthy, robust animal, they're going to be very, very resistant to disease, parasites. You know, if you got them, they're nutritionally deplete. They're going to be under a lot of stress and they're going to get sick. I don't care what you do. I don't care what breed and how resistant they are. If they're not healthy, they're going to get sick. They're going to jump out. If I'm not careful. <laughs> this one's looking. Come here. This one's a little feistier. <laughs> Get them on their back and they stop struggling. Okay, so we're just gonna leave them in here. Like I said, we're gonna check back in, see how they do, and uh, we'll catch back up with you after we've decided how we're gonna take and get them with the herd and what we're gonna do. We'll probably end up, to initially put them out, but we're gonna give the cattle and horses a larger paddock and then build, not out of hog panels, but with hot fence, a paddock with inside a paddock. So the cattle and horses can get all around it. They can all kind of acclimate to each other and hopefully then we'll be able to integrate them into the actual flirt and they won't get stomped, killed, kicked, all that good stuff or run off, they'll finally uh, get some friends. All right, let the education begin. Now again, this is only a one jewel fencer, not super hot, but we have such a small amount of wire inside here. It'll be pretty spicy. We'll check that with the fault finder later. I'm assuming it's gonna be somewhere in the 8,000 volts. I'd say they're happy. Look at them. Love and life, fresh forage. They got red clover, white clover, Indian hemp. We got some, what we got? We got some fescue, we got some orchard grass. What else we got in here? We got a few warm seasons starting to come in. But as you can see, these pastures, they're doing pretty good. I just measured some tall fescue, Kentucky 31. Two days ago, we had 36 to 38 inch blade lengths on the grass. So it's incredible. I can't believe how well it's doing. How fast it's turned around in such a short period of time just from management, right? As you can see, our garden's not getting any management. We got cockleberries in there. We got common ragweed. I think I saw a little horse nettle, some hogweed. Uh. Okay, so here we are 11 days later and we've decided to keep them here and just rotationally move them around down in this field. That's close to where we live and uh, they're just below so we can hear them if there's a problem. We can keep a close eye on them. We're going to get them further trained to the hot fence. They've been doing really well with it. Uh, it's been shocking the crap out of us. So they're, they're getting pretty trained. But the, the whole idea of this is, is that we're going to let them mature a little bit, get a little more size on them, and hopefully a little more smarts before we go stick them with the herd and they get trampled or wander off. So there's been a lot of speculation by folks out there, whether you can run sheep, cattle, and horses together and how that works, especially with predators, yada, yada. So um, our long-term goal is, is to not have to run livestock guardian dogs and have a multi-species flirt that, uh, you know, the horses will stomp coyotes flat, no doubt. We got horses down there, they're not gonna let anything with fangs into that enclosure <laughs> or into the paddock that's where we're at so we appreciate you guys sticking around don't forget to hit the like share subscribe all that stuff really helps us out and if you'd like to uh, check out some of our merch check that down below too we're going to have links in the description and we'll see you guys on the next one